I know, I was so excited when I saw it. Um, you're still allowed to use it even though we're going to be using it today. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be learning uh, how to use alpha masks uh, and effects for type animation today. Minimal, oh thank you, uh, minimal animator use. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our composition. So we're going to go open up your After Effects, create a new composition. We're going to do the default. It's HDTV 1080 Uh And I'm going to make it nine seconds and two frames long because that's how long my audio is. Do you, do you need me? Huh? The alarm was off. Oh! Did it go off? No, no, no. no, no I just I realized and I left. That? Because I think you had some seconds. Oh, while it alarms before it starts. I don't hear it going off now. Okay. No, no, no. I think so. I, I, I entered a thing and it left. Okay. I'm not, I've never tried that before. So we'll see if a cop comes by. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, maybe, yeah. Because uh, cause then it's, it's a pain in the butt, but I just show them my ID and it's fine. Yeah. Um, the cops are kind of sassy. <laughs> they don't like it that they have to come over here because I did the door wrong. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. No, I've set it off before. This is why I know this process. Mm. <laughs> Look, I have so many four-digit codes I have to remember. Sometimes I put my phone code into the door code and I can't understand why it's not working because yeah. I need to drink some coffee. <laughs> okay, so. Like yes, mm-hmm, <laughs> yep. All right, so, uh, okay. So that's it, that's it. You just need HDTV, it's the last one down, down here. You got it, change it to uh, 0902. Hit okay. And you've got your composition. It's this bad boy. All right, and then we're gonna bring in our sound. So uh, the sound that you downloaded off of Canvas for today. If you haven't found it, it is under Pages, Lecture 15, I think we're at, at this point, and Lecture Files. There are two files in there. One of them is sound and one of them is a font. I'll get to the font in a second. But right now you need the sound. So I'm going to do that by just right-clicking, import, file, and then finding where I put that file. This is 55. All right, once you got that audio imported, go ahead and drag it down into your composition and hit L twice on your keyboard so that you can see your waveform. Is this correct? Today, a toddler yeah. walked by our shrimp cooler and started chanting, shrimp heaven now. <laughs> so this is our shrimp heaven now. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a background. Right now it's black, we're gonna give ourselves a, a heaven background. So to do that, just deselect everything. Make sure you don't have your audio selected and double click on your rectangle up here. It makes a rectangle that is the exact size of your composition and then change the color. Ugh. No stroke, just fill. Uh, I'm gonna give mine a shrimp color. <laughs> Just a fun pink, just a pink shrimp. Uh, okay, so we got ourselves a shrimp background. I'm gonna lock it so we don't accidentally move it around. 
OK. So we got a background. It's locked. We got our audio. Uh, we're going to now make some labels because I have more words in here than are the words that I want to animate. So I want to put labels on uh, the beginning of shrimp, the beginning of heaven, and the beginning of now. So I'm just going to scrum through and find shrimp. There we go. <laughs> Ramp. Uh, so I'm just going to hit command star. Well, nope. There we go. Control star. <laughs> uh, and double click on the label to name them. Shramp. And then this one's going to be heaven. So I'm going to hit control star. Double click on it. Heaven. Heaven, now! Okay, and this one's gonna be now. So, control star. Now. Okay, great. Now I have a general idea on my timeline where these bad boys are, so I don't have to keep listening to Shrimp Heaven Now all the time. While I'm setting things up, I'll probably still have to keep playing it once I need to refine the timing of things. Uh, but if you don't wanna just play it constantly all the time, these labels are very helpful. It's more of an organizational thing. It's not required for you to do, but I just like it. I just think they're neat. Uh, it should still be con control star. Uh, you can also try shift star. You can also try just star. <laughs> You can just mash all of the function keys down next to your space bar and, and hit the thing that has star above it until a marker appears. Uh, oh, make the layer selected. The layer that you want to put the marker on selected. Shift 8, yeah. I think Shift 8 does it up higher on the timeline, but that works. Got it. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we got our shrimp heavens now. Uh, so now we're going to actually start animating. We're going to type in the word shrimp. So get your type tool out by hitting Command T on your keyboard or just clicking the big T up here and clicking somewhere in here and writing the word shrimp. Oh. <laughs> And making sure that your word shrimp is above your background layer. <laughs> shrimp. Southern is the only accent I can do. Okay, so I've got the word shrimp. Okay, make sure that your word shrimp is center aligned. So go over to your paragraph palette and hit the center alignment. That makes it so that we have that control point in the center of the word shrimp. So when it modifies itself, when it scales up, or when it rotates, it's going to be around the center of the word shrimp, which is what I want. And that's just by clicking the word shrimp, going over to the paragraph palette, and hitting the center align button. Um, okay, and I also want to use the align palette for this. So I've dropped in, let me zoom out just like a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I dropped in, I just like clicked wherever, but I would like for shrimp to be centered in the middle of the, of the page uh, horizontally. So to do that, you do have an align palette here in After Effects. It might be over here. If you don't see it, go over to Window, Align. It's the first one, and it will pop up. Uh, and so I'm going to want to do, based on uh, align layers to composition, and do this bad boy, the second one. Align vertical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could also do this one to get it like right in the center, like centered vertically and horizontally. But I know I want heaven now to be below it, so I'm just going to drag up my shrimp to be in the top one third. That way I'm leaving room for heaven and now below it. So I just have shrimp up at the top and centered. 
So your align tools are really nice for making sure you get things in the center of the composition. Uh, and to do that, just make sure you're saying align layers to composition. All right, we're also going to change uh, the font and the color. So you have your character palette up. If you don't see it, window, character. Um, I have a fancy font for this one. So uh, under the files that you downloaded for today, you'll have Sacramento, the new font. Double click on Sacramento. When it has a little window pop up, say install, and it will install it. Uh, and it's so nice. Nowadays, you don't even need to restart the program to get Sacramento to pop up. You just need to like move away from the character palette for a second. Like It won't show up if you're already doing this. Uh, but if you like click away and come back, Sacramento will be there. It's great. We've really, we've really upped the game in like the last five years for installing fonts. It's dope. Uh, and I'm also going to, so I have it as Sacramento. I also changed the color to be a dark brown because I think that looks nice on this paint. And that's just clicking the color in the character palette and just like finding a nice chocolate brown. Uh, and then whatever size that you feel is good for your composition, I bought it. And that's how you install fonts. So if you want to install fancy fonts uh, for your project, that's, it's easy peasy. You just download them from the internet, double click on them, hit install, and they're there. Um, a lot of places that sell fonts will do free demo versions, especially for like student projects. So they only want you to pay once you actually need a license for using it for freelancing. Just make sure you keep track of that, those bad boys so if you start freelancing, you don't accidentally use your demo license <laughs> for professional commercial work. Um, but you can get a lot of really cool free fonts for just practicing. Um, I really like Google fonts a lot. Future fonts is really cool. Um, Adobe fonts has like a, a buttload. Like they don't just have the stuff that is in here by default. You can go to adobefonts.com and activate fonts. I'm saying this in case anybody didn't get taught that in typography one, y'all probably know that. But if you don't, no shame. Uh, be really careful if you go to like 99 fonts or font squirrel or something. Because they do have good fonts in there. It's just hidden under all of the really bad ones, under all of the horrifying ones. OK, so we have our shrimp. We have it aligned. Now we need to actually animate it. So to do that, we're going to make uh, a new shape. So make sure you don't have anything selected. We're making a new shape layer. We're going to go up to our rectangle tool. And we're going to draw a rectangle that covers the word shrimp. like like so. And I'm just going to change it to it. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to change it to a new color just so I can keep track of it. Because right now it's the last color you use, which is the background. So it sort of blends in. OK. So we're going to move our timeline indicator to the end of the word shrimp. So I can see here um, that my, where my shrimp label is, the word ends like right here. You can also just move it to right before your second label if you don't have this up. Uh, and we're going to go to our shape layer and we're going to keyframe its position where it, where it is, where we just drew it. So I'm going to select that layer, hit P for position, and keyframe it. Just hit that little stopwatch button. So I just selected my shape layer. I hit P on my keyboard for position. And I hit the little stopwatch so that I can remember this is where this little rectangle is. OK. And then I'm going to move my timeline indicator to the beginning of the word shrimp where my first label is. And I'm going to move my solid off and up away from my text. So I'm going to get my direct select tool out, grab this bad boy and just move straight up. I'm holding shift so that it goes straight while I drag it, but just get it so that it's just like up here. And because we keyframed earlier and we're moving its position, we now have two keyframes that auto keyframes its position here. So, so if you hit play, you can Shrimp. see this. <laughs> I need to put that on silent. 
shrimp. <laughs> uh, you can see this thing drop down over the text. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do, once we have this little animation going, is we're going to make a track mat. So I'm going to make sure that this shape layer is right above the word shrimp in my, in my timeline. And I'm going to go to the shrimp layer. I'm going to go to where it says track mat. If you don't see the word track mat, hit toggle switches and modes so you can get track mat. It'll say none right now. Hit that down arrow and change it to alpha mat. Shape layer two. Oop. And now it works just like a mask. So a track mat is a mask that is a separate layer. It's not attached to the actual layer itself. So when you make a mask, usually it's attached to the shrimp layer. But now we have a layer that is totally separate that we can control separately. Uh, and we just say, this is the track mat for shrimp. And now, shrimp will only be revealed when it is inside of this rectangle. You can do this for any shape, any two layers, what have you. Uh, it's great. So now we have shrimp being revealed. Heck yeah. OK. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the end of the word shrimp, get my rectangle tool out, and cover up the word shrimp. I'm going to go to my shape layer and hit P on the keyboard and keyframe its position so that it's over the word shrimp right at the end of where that word's being said. Because that's when I want it to show up. And then I'll move my timeline indicator to the beginning of the word shrimp where my first label is. And I'm going to click and drag this bad boy up. And now if I hit play, Shrimp. that rectangle goes down. Then the next step is on my shrimp layer. I'm going to go two columns over to where it says track mat, none, and change it to say alpha mat, shape layer two. Now it does. Okay. Do you get it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, a thing to keep in mind with track mats is that that whatever shape you want to be the track mat, whatever you want to be the mask, has to be right above the layer that you want to mask. Aldo, you need help? Uh, I create track map when it changes to track map. Everybody in the Discord got it? Okay, um, track mat is going to be uh, if you, so one place it might be hiding is if you have switches and modes in the wrong place. You might have like a bunch of these little circles and, and stuff next to your uh, layer name. If you see all of these little icons, go down to the bottom left and hit toggle switches and modes. And now you'll see next to the layer name mode and then track mat. Uh, on the actual layer, it'll say the word none. Got it. Great. OK. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do heaven. So I'm going to move my uh, mm, I'm not going to worry about this yet. OK, so I'm just going to type in the word heaven. I'm going to get my te uh, type tool out. Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that I have, uh, I'm not masking that. Yeah, heaven. OK. Um, I didn't realize that happened before. Um, yeah.
if you're, when you put the type tool out, if it tried to make a mask out of it, <laughs> just, just undo and click off and then type it again. I didn't realize that if you had like shrimp highlighted, it would try to turn it into a track mat because it auto makes the level above it. That's weird. That isn't anything anyone wants. Okay, so now I have heaven. Uh, make sure you can see, uh, move your timeline indicator to the beginning of heaven. Make sure that you can see both shrimp and heaven. All right, so if you have it looking like this, we're all good. Move to at the uh, to the end of heaven, just like we did before. Okay, um, and this time we're going to keyframe heaven. So we're gonna uh, make sure we have or click on the heaven layer, hit position. keyframe that position. So click your heaven layer, hit P on your keyboard for position, keyframe position. Hit the little stopwatch button. Okay, and then we're gonna move our timeline indicator to our heaven label, so right when heaven is started being said. And we're gonna move heaven to be right on top of shrimp. So drag that bad boy up on top of shrimp. And you should have if you hit play, heaven <laughs> heaven drops down from shrimp. It's going to look cooler in a second. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a shape, a new shape, and it's going to cover up the word shrimp again. So same as before, make sure you have nothing selected. Get your rectangle tool out and cover up that word shrimp. Okay. And now I'm gonna make sure that your shape your new shape layer is above heaven. You're gonna go to the heaven layer, you're gonna go to track mat, and where it says none, click on it and do alpha inverted mat. So before when we had an alpha mat, uh, shrimp only shows up when the shape is on it. When you have an inverted mat, the word only shows up when the shape is not on it. So now, because we have a rectangle over shrimp, at the beginning, heaven is hidden, and as our word moves down away from that rectangle we made, it reveals itself. So now it looks like heaven is dropping down from the word shrimp. <laughs> so that's the difference between alpha mats and alpha inverted mats. Uh, it just depends on how you want them to be revealed. Got it. Nice, Iris. Okay. Um, so now, now that we have this, you're going to do the same thing for the word now. The same thing that we just did for heaven, you're going to do for the word now, except independently. See if you can figure it out.
you know, once you start keyframing when you touch stuff, it's just like chaos. Okay, how's my Discord? <laughs> how's my Discord team doing? Nice, awesome. <laughs> Okay. Okay, uh, I'll run through it real quick just in case. All right, so I've typed my word now. It's up at the top. I'm going to uh, select it and hit P on the keyboard with my indicator. I put it like halfway through now because he really makes a meal out of the word now. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna keyframe the position move to the beginning of the word now and move it up to be over heaven. So now I have two keyframes. Now It goes like that. Um, and then I'm going to um, make sure that I have nothing selected. Make a new rectangle over the heaven now. Uh, and then go to my now uh, with, the sh with the new shape above, right above the word now. I'm going to hit uh, where it says none and go to alpha inverted. And now, now. it drops down. <laughs> uh, once you have these keyframes down, you can go through and play the audio and see if you need to speed anything up. Um, this is also a great time to do easy ease. Uh, add in into the graph editor, get some snappy movements up and down. Uh, just because it's, it's type doesn't mean that the graph editor isn't still useful. It makes your stuff go from um, feeling clunky to feeling polished if you do easy ease and add in the graph editor. And again, that's uh, F9 on your keyboard and this bad boy over here. Uh, you can also make move these uh, keyframes closer together to get get the words to move faster. The closer the uh, keyframes are together, the faster it will move. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to, uh, over here, emphasis. is emphasis on the now, so we're gonna add an emphasis on the now. So I'm moving my timeline indicator to over here uh, to the emphasis on the now, which is like the last, the last bit. Uh, and I'm gonna select my now layer and I'm going to go into effects. Effects should be on the side over here. If you don't see them, go to window, effects. And it'll show up. Uh, so these are effects and presets, animations that uh, After Effects already made for you. So you can just double click on and they're applied. So under animation presets, you have a little flippy arrow. And then under text, you have another flippy arrow. And then here they are. This is all of them. All of the text animation presets. All of the things that Adobe made for you. Uh, some of these are really great. Some of them are incredibly difficult to use. And you end up spending more time trying to adjust the presets than you would have if you just animated yourself in the first place. So it's really, it's like uh, using the tracker. It's, it's really a, a matter of, is this gonna save you time or not? And if it doesn't save you time, then just do it yourself. If you spend yourself fuss, or, uh, find yourself fussing too much with a preset, just get rid of it. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply, apply our first uh, text animation preset. I don't remember where it is in all of these uh, many, many folders, so I'm just gonna type it in. <laughs> If you, want, if you know the name of your preset, you can just type it in at the top and you don't have to do all the flippy arrows. We're going to do rotate Q. R-O-T-A-T-E-H-U-E. -E. Rotate Q. So you can see it's under animations, text, fill and stroke, rotate Q. And when you want to uh, apply any text animation, make sure you have your text layer selected. So I have now selected. I'm going to double click on it to apply it. Okay, cool. When you apply a preset, uh, sometimes nothing will happen. Uh, the place where you can control presets and change their default settings is either going to be up in the effects 
This is a tab that's next to project. This one doesn't have anything under effects, but sometimes they will. The other places, it will just automatically make keyframes for you. So if you don't see anything, uh, just hit U or U, U, U twice, umbrella twice on your keyboard, uh, and you'll see all the keyframes and changes that it made. So now we can see with my type, I selected now and I hit U, uh, I can see that my animator, it made an animator for me with a fill color, and then uh, it animated the hue, the fill hue, uh, and randomized it. So first, I don't want it to be this red color. I'm gonna change it to something else. Uh, keep in mind when you're doing rotate hue, I guess I'll do like a shrimp pink. <laughs> Shrimpy pink. Uh, this is just changing the start color, but it will also, once it starts rotating hue, it only rotates hue. So if you change the value or saturation, it's going to rotate a rainbow of that value and saturation. So if you pick a dark purple, it'll rotate through a rainbow of dark colors. If you want a highly saturated rainbow, uh, keep it up near the top. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. And now if I hit play, you can see it goes. Emphasis on the now. <laughs> emphasis on the nap. And that's just like, it saves you a bunch of time doing the the, uh, the expressions to get it to actually, so it animated the fill hue so that it rotated the degree of what angle it was. So now it's just floating around through all of these colors. It's a cute little effect. <laughs> um, on the PowerPoint for today, I have some of my favorite text animators in there that I think work really nicely. Uh, so if you're not sure what to apply, you can just play around with those bad boys. Key rotation is, is one of them, but I don't want to go through, through all of them. <laughs> okay, and that's it. Yay. If you play through. Trip. Heaven, now. <laughs> Emphasis on the now. Fantastic. Okay, uh, render it out. Okay, uh, so make sure you upload that to Canvas for the exercise for today. Uh, and then next time, uh, it says 3D text on the syllabus, but somebody, uh, Ginny requested how to do like handwritten looking effects. What, what's the vote on that? Would y'all rather have 3D text or handwritten stuff? Three D. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. We'll do three D then. And if I think that the lecture is short, maybe I'll add. Yeah. Yeah. But like not as like a follow along. I'll just show you how to do it. Okay. Cool. Good to know. 
Oh no, the Discord is rebelled. <laughs> in person wants 3D and the Discord wants handwritten. <laughs> okay, I can, I'll try to do a blend. I may do just 3D as an exercise and the handwritten is just something y'all can watch me do. I mean, if but gonna, like, whichever one we're gonna fight for our life over, mm -hmm. I would prefer to learn with you. Oh, okay. And then like if there's one that is more Grinding, that would be okay. Gotcha. Okay, definitely the handwritten one is a grinding one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I mean, it's not hard. It's just, um, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. It takes so much time. Or you can take, uh, or you can pay $30 and it's really easy. <laughs> but you have to, like, pay for a add-on that does it for you and then it's, like, super easy. But then you have to pay $30. And I haven't. I bit the bullet on that yet. <laughs> Fiverr add-ons. I didn't even think about Fiverr having AE add-ons. That's wild. Okay, anyway, so um, in addition to the lecture that we do next time, uh, we will talk about part two and three of your project three. So we're going to do a check-in. So you should have, um, you've chosen your audio file, you've broken down your script, uh, and you've thought about what typefaces you're going to use, how you're going to animate it. You've made a storyboard. You only really need one storyboard for this one because uh, it's probably going to change once you get into After Effects. But having a base plan will be helpful before you get into After Effects. Uh, and then start creating your assets. So if you've decided that you want to uh, have illustrations and stuff, you should be starting making those now before you get into After Effects itself. Okay. Uh, that's what we'll do next time. Lecture, check in. Okay. Any questions? Just the big points. Just just the major points. Yeah. So anywhere you know you need like a big effect, put that in your storyboard. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like all of the words. It can just be like rectangles where the words would be. Okay. Yeah. Oh sure, Taylor. What's what's your what's the videos you're choosing between? I'll throw them in chat really quick. Okay, we can do a class vote real fast. 